Vertiv holding price has been soaring lately. It's trading at $115 per share. That's almost 10 times the roughly $15 per share it was trading at in 2023. Of course, Vertiv Holdings is benefiting from the increasing investments in developing digital infrastructures, building out AI data centers optimized for artificial intelligence. And so the stock price is soaring in response to that. The company's getting increasing revenue, profits, cash flow, orders, companies firing on all cylinders. But how much is the stock really worth? What's the intrinsic value per share? That's what I'm going to calculate in this video using the discounted cash flow valuation model. And I'm going to share with you precisely where I'm getting all of the numbers, the estimates, and the assumptions I'm going to use to make this valuation estimate. So let's jump into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. Right, so one of the things I'm going to need is what I mentioned, the market price, so that when I find the, the intrinsic value per share, I can compare it with the market price to determine if it's under or overvalued at current prices. The next thing I need is its free cash flow. What I have here is the trailing free cash flow for Vertiv Holdings, trailing 12 months, came in at $1.079 billion. And I need the company's total long-term debt, which stands at $2.931 billion. I also need the cash and short-term investment balance at $908 million. I will also need the number of shares outstanding, which is $384.32 million. And I need the company's market capitalization, which currently stands at $43 billion. We're not done yet. I need the company's beta, which stands at 1.59. I'm getting this number from Yahoo Finance. And I need a growth rate to estimate the company's cash flow. The growth rate I'm going to use to estimate the company's cash flows are this 31.57% growth rate. This 31.57% represents what analysts on Wall Street that are following Vertiv stock, what they expect the company to increase its earnings per share, over the next five years. So this is a EPS growth rate estimate, earnings per share growth rate estimate that I'm gonna use to grow free cash flows. So you can make your own determination whether or not it's effective to use an EPS estimate for free cash flow. Now I'm utilizing that because this is the best number I have in terms of estimates going forward for this company looking ahead the next five years. All right, now that we have all of the numbers we need, we can jump into the free cash flow valuation model. So let me first draw your attention here where I have the company's trailing 12 month free cash flow of $1.079 billion. I'm going to grow its free cash flows or forecast an increase in its free cash flows, utilizing that short term growth rate we found from Yahoo Finance at 31.57%. I'm going to utilize that growth rate for the next five years. And then I'm going to have the company transition to a slower growth rate for the next five years, going from 31.57% to 15.79%, or in other words, 50% of the first five years. Then I have the company settling down at its long run growth rate of 5%. So I have it going from 31 to 16 to 5% over the next 11 years in increases in free cash flow. So when you estimate all of those free cash flows over the next 11 years, we need to discount those cash flows back to today because money in the future is not worth as much as money today. When we take those discounted free cash flows, we come up with the present value of free cash flows for the next decade of $20.92 billion for Vertiv Holdings. Now we could forecast these free cash flows all the way out to infinity, but instead of doing them one at a time, as I did with the first 10 years of estimates, we can use a terminal value estimate to come up with that value. And to use the terminal value, we take the growth, we take the free cash flow expected one year ahead, divided by the weighted average cost of capital minus the growth rate. And when I compute that, I get a terminal value of $113.5 billion for Vertiv. Again, I need to take the present value of that because it's in the future. And that brings me to the PV of terminal value of $32.89 billion. 
If you're wondering what discount rate I'm using to discount these cash flows, I'm using a weighted average cost of capital of 13.19%, utilizing the capital asset pricing model with a beta of 1.59 and a market risk premium of 6%. I'm computing the company's target capital structure at 95% and 5%, 95% equity and 5% debt because the company has 2.9 billion in debt and 43 billion market capitalization. So when I utilize those inputs, it brings me to the present value of terminal value of 32.9 billion, present value of cash flows at 20.9 billion, summed together you get a value of operations at 53 0.8192 billion dollars but we're not done yet to that value of operations we need to add the company's cash and subtract the debt and that brings us to the value of equity of 51.8 billion but we want to know the price per share the intrinsic value per share not the total value of the company so when you divide by the number of shares outstanding that brings you to an intrinsic value per share my intrinsic value per share for Vertiv is $134.78, which if you compare it to the current market price, it seems it's undervalued. $114.92 is what it's trading at, and my DCF suggests that it's worth $134.78. Now, unsurprisingly, I have Vertiv stock rated as a buy, and I last updated that after the company's earnings release, on October 24, I've had the stock rated as a buy all year long, in part because of the DCF valuation. It's, however, one tool I use in among a several set of tools to value a company, and it points to Vertiv stock being undervalued. Now, even if I were to use different growth rates, lower growth rates in the long run instead of 5%, if I were to use a 4% growth rate, it would mean the stock price, the intrinsic value is $124 per share instead of $134, which would still suggest roughly 10% undervaluation, but not as much as with the 5% growth rate. And then with the 3% growth rate, you get an intrinsic value of $116 per share, which is roughly about where the price is trading at today. So you can come to your own conclusion and determine if my estimates are too optimistic, too pessimistic, or right on point. Regardless, this should be for information purposes only, and you should do much more due diligence before making a decision on whether or not to invest in a stock. This should just be one among many investment tools and research that you use to come to a conclusion. Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.